Hello, this is Andrew from Left Code, and today we're going to be working on using Blazor to create a component, do normal data binding, and do two-way data binding, and also change the way that data is formatted in our controls. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, do this title and set this in our index. So if we go over to the index here, we're just going to change this to basically look like this app component that we have here. I'm going to go ahead and just blow over everything else that they have. And the way that you do bindings, unlike Angular, is if you don't do this um, double bracket stuff, we're just going to do an at sign. And then the way that we get the um, actual property there is you do at code. And then when you have that, you can just put string title. And we're, I'm just going to leave this lowercase for now. But um, because I don't think this is going to stay here forever, but um, this is basically how you do that. And so anything in at code is just C sharp code. Um, here we, we're going to have this binding. So if we save this, all we have to do is a .NET build. That's going to go run, create the project, then do .NET run. After this .NET run happens, um, I've already got it open here. But so our page changed from this to now it says Tour of Heroes. So the other thing we're gonna have to do here is actually clean up this page because we don't want all this other nav bar and stuff. So we're I'm just gonna go to the main layout um, and change change all this. I'm just gonna leave that bottom section there. So I'm gonna comment this out here. I'm gonna comment this out for right now. And then I'm going to go into the CSS, um, if I can remember where that is hidden at here. I think it's in WW root. All right, so in this CSS here, I'm going to take out everything except for this app error CSS. So I'm going to move that down to the bottom. Um, and then I'm just going to remove everything else from here. I don't want any of those um, standard ones. And what we're going to do here is we're going to actually steal all the styles from here. So I'm just going to click this copy button and I'll give you guys a link to these in the description below. Um, but uh, this can, this will be our actual CSS then. I think that should be good there. So I'm just going to save that. I'm going to kill this here with control C. Do again .NET build. Then do our .NET run and do a refresh here. Okay, there we go. But now we have now we have a properly formatted Tour of Heroes app, and uh, we can get going with the next part of this. So the next part is we're gonna go down to the Hero Editor display, and this is actually gonna give us uh, the the steps we need to start working through more of the binding things. We're gonna skip through this ng generate since we're not using Angular, but we'll definitely be talking about some of these Angular things that we go through here. Here, here is basically telling us it wants us to create a component with a property of a hero, which is a string right now, called windstorm, and then we're going to show that component. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm just going to call it components, and hopefully I can put it where I want to. So there's my components folder. And then in the components folder, I'm just going to create a new file, and I'm going to I'm going to do this with lowercase, um, but you guys can do it with uppercase if you want to. And this is just going to be a dot razor file. So now in this, all I have to do is again do at hero. Sorry, autocorrect got to me, and then do at code. And here we're going to do string hero equal windstorm. This is just temporary, so I'm just going to do a lowercase. Um, make sure that hero is like that. And then we have to do something to actually pull this into our index. So we have our hero here. Uh, the only thing that we're going to have to do is go into our index. And then on our index, under title, well, the only thing we have to do is add heroes. And it tried to pull in the full namespace there, which is fine, but I believe we can do it without that. 
And the way that we do that import there is we're going to go to the imports and we're going to be doing at using and then tour of heroes dot components. So that should now make it so that our razor component shows up or our heroes component shows up on our index page. So I'm in, I'm just going to save everything, make sure it's all saved. Um, I'm going to then go back, kill this dot net build. And do .NET run. Nope, oh, we got broken thing. So the component hero starts with a lowercase character. The component can't start with a lowercase character. Okay, we'll fix that then. We all learn together. I had never tried it before with a lowercase, so I learned that too here. Um, I'm just gonna switch this really quick. .NET build. Run. And then we just refresh. So there's our component showing up here. So now we've got everything. We we're using a custom component. We pulled that in our in our index page, and that's also pulling from a binding the same way that we're doing it here. So that gets us through this first section, um, and that's this code right here basically. So. The next thing they want to do is in TypeScript, they're going to create an interface. We're going to do something similar. We're just going to create a class. Again, I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it models. I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead here and get to my imports and do an at using tour of heroes models. Or, yeah. So that should be done. So that gets imported automatically to our index page and our other razor pages. Okay, then here we're gonna add the model in for Hero CS, which is basically gonna be taking over for their interface. So we're just gonna add the new file there and we're gonna call this hero.cs. And then I'm just gonna paste in the code so you don't have to watch me type this. Okay, so we have tour of heroes models. We have the, we have the name property, we have a ID property and then what they say here is they want to export this class we don't need to do any of that we don't need to do any of this funky importing stuff because all of that's happening in our shared libraries so this is all the stuff they have to do to create a component we're all covered here because this is all we have to do to create a component the only thing we really have to do is the actual heroes that we are the hero class that we just created and then this should say new hero and we're gonna go like this. Um, we're definitely gonna use that hero class, so it's gonna be a name and make it equal to windstorm. And the ID, and we're just gonna put it equal to one right now. So then, so then we have all of this pretty much set up. But then, if we come down and look at what they need us to put in this component. We're gonna we're gonna change this to at hero name at hero ID and then we're also gonna change this again here and if you caught my mistake I missed this one so then this looks like it's all right. Let's double check to see if this actually builds right now. Looks like I got it. Hopefully I got all my saves. We'll see if it all run, runs and loads correctly. So we're going to refresh here. And now we have the ID and the windstorm showing. So the next thing that's really cool here is that they're showing uh, these things in Angular 2 called pipes. Or, and that lets you basically do everything in uppercase. We can do something similar in Razor. Um, this is on the heading. They want to do a two upper here. So we can just use C sharp code there. Anywhere that this app binding's at basically says that's free code for us to use in C sharp. So again, I'm gonna kill this, do a .NET build. 
then we'll do a dot net run so this should be good to go do my refresh and now we have this in uppercase at this point we've learned how to do two way or one way data binding because this is basically only a read only if this hero changes this property will change but we can't actually get any um, input from the forms the next thing that the tutorial wants us to do is edit the hero if we look here on two-way data binding this does it pretty crazy um, in angular we're not going to do we're not going to have to do as much there steal this blob here just so i don't have to retype everything and then we're going to change this input so this is going to be at bind equals the hero dot name I probably need to tape all that out get that space in there so now we have our binding and this one looks a little bit different if you look here the at sign is right before the variable here when you do this bind um, it's basically going to say do an on change event it's going to trigger and they're going to be bound together so we've got our two-way data binding here we can ignore this other stuff that they're doing they have imports they need to do we're still good there and then um, they have more imports for their controllers to make everything happy so we're going to do .NET build .NET run again we'll be really good at that by the end of this tutorial and if we take a look and see what happens we now have windstorm here if I go ahead and change something it doesn't update the name automatically but as soon as I hit enter it updates the name to winds um, if I put a space and add something else if I tab off it also adds it so that on change event fires when this input changes we can change this to taco man and then if I tab off or hit enter it changes everywhere else that it's bound that completes this section so I'll meet you in the next video